Tara, I mean, if you look at the demand story in the crude oil world at the moment, it's beginning to fizzle, it's getting weaker, and those tapering plans for January for OPEC Plus are becoming increasingly out of reach. Yes, good morning, Yusuf. Um, so I think oil has a, a few headwinds. Um, one, of course, is the fact that this pandemic uh, has um, persisted for much longer than had been anticipated back in March or April. We're now looking at a resurgent wave across much of the world, and that clearly has implications for demand. Now, supply has been relatively constrained by the agreements uh, that OPEC Plus have worked so hard uh, to maintain. But the problem is that it's becoming increasingly difficult for member states to keep to those um, to those quotas as they become um, under uh, sort of come under intensifying fiscal pressures to boost their revenues. Most OPEC Plus members depend very highly on oil revenues, and that is an issue. In your research, you highlight the possibility of oil prices sort of staying lower for longer and ultimately the ripple effect that would have across the GCC. But you also acknowledge that in many ways the Gulf has not lived up to the necessity for reform and to diversify away from crude oil. I mean, how vulnerable are some of these countries this minute? Well, very vulnerable, um, Yusuf. Um, I think if you look at the uh, forecast by S&P Global Ratings, um, the GCC is going to require nearly $500 billion in deficit financing over the next three years. Um, and that's clearly you know, a, a massive hit uh, to the balance sheet. Um, and uh, if, you know, without oil, uh, it's very difficult to see how they generate revenue. The, the litmus, litmus test for a diversification is can you meet your bills without oil being at 100 or, or, or $120? And the reality is no GCC country meets that test.